My name is Ben Buse. I am currently in the 11th grade and I am a potter. So when it comes to me creating a piece, I usually have to start with like a base idea. So before I sketch anything, draw anything, I need to have something that I'm thinking of. Something that makes this piece different from stuff I've done before. Um, something that doesn't just make it a random pot I threw in 15 minutes. I have a lot of influence to my art from stuff I just see on Instagram. Um, there's, I mean, I follow a variety of potters on Instagram that I think make really cool, pristine, clean um, pottery. Uh, there are also certain potters that Mr. Shorjan suggests to me, that's my teacher, right? He suggests me people like Josh Deweese, who actually does the opposite of what I do. He does very organic shapes, which um, show a lot of the working process in them. So I kind of like to look at people like that and find what I, what I can use of their style to influence my style, how I can stretch myself to really know what I like, not just think I know, but to actually understand and truly, truly get to a point where my style is truly mine. Scrolling. I'm scrolling through my Instagram trying to figure out what I haven't done. I'm just trying to find, this is, so these are textures that, I'm, that I kind of enjoy, but at the same time, how exciting are they? Not that exciting. That's what I'm trying to say, is they're so base level. And I don't just want to work on a glaze thing because I can make any sort of form and glaze it cool. I want to look at the form of something. I want to really be challenged. So coming up with the initial ideas um, can derive from a few different places. Sometimes it just comes from me just sitting down and thinking, and I think of, oh, that might be a good idea. Sometimes I say, hey, Mr. Schwartz, what does this do? And he says, oh, it, it's a tool that does this. I just go, huh. I've never done that before. And then I'll think, how could I use this tool, this text, like a texture tool, for example, or a paint, a glazing tool, for example, how can I use this to make a pot look good? What kind of pot can I make that would complement this technique? Um, and other times still, I'll see something on Instagram, for example, as I scroll through and just think, huh, that's interesting. I've never seen anything really like that. I wonder how I could take it to, to the next level or how I could try it or what it would look like if I did it. My style consists um, a lot in the world of symmetry and kind of pristine, pristine edges, pristine lines. I make a lot of things that are very, very smooth. That's something that's very important to me, that my level approaches something that is unique, individual, but almost looks like machine made, like something, a point where my skills at a point is at a level my, where my ability shows professionalism, right? Where I don't cut corners, I'm not sloppy, where I can make it absolutely perfect. That's kind of a thing I strive to do with my work. Huh. So, right now, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this piece. You see this camera? You see this, what I'm looking at right here? Look at that goodies, look at that goodies camera. It looks cool. Um, so I started with that idea and I started sketching. So I just find a quiet place typically where I can just take time, sit down and just sketch. I'll sometimes get a few ideas out. Sometimes I'll do a detailed sketch. It all depends on just how inspiration hits me at that point of that moment, right? So I've used this rib before to make um, designs kind of like this. So like what you see on this, these ridges, it's something, that, it's something that I really, really like. I think it's a cool effect and I would like to take it into more than just like a round cup or vase or something like that. I'm thinking I might want to do some stuff with like very small ridges, like towards the top of the rim as well as um, at the bottom and where the pattern breaks off, I might want to look at the very small ridge that just kind of ties that whole effect together. Let me see what I can do about that.
Hmm, I'm liking this. I'm liking this design. It is different than what I've done before. Typically, well, I don't know about typically. Frankly, this shape right here, this kind of hard shoulder, is something that I think is a really cool design that I've seen before, but I have never really explored or worked with. So I'm gonna try it out. We're gonna see how it goes. Here we go. Now I'm getting a better idea of what I'm going for with this. Brought that back in. Aha! And then, Ah. Reflected that same design all the way up. This is the idea of what I'm going for right now. And then after I get a sketch figured out, I'll go into the ceramics room. If it's a school project, you know, during class. Otherwise, I'll make time after school to do it. And I'll start preparing my clay. I means wedging and all that. And then I'll throw it on the potter's wheel. Um, typically a pot can take me anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes depending on how complex the form is and how big it is. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it's had it's had babies since um, I first drew. Always gonna be massive. I'm gonna just get this clean so it sticks well. Try to, get it Try to flat center it first, just so I can do less centering later. Okay. Here we go, this is gonna be massive. Massive, I say. Oh yeah, there's a pedal down here, by the way, that my foot's on, so. So I'm applying pressure with my leg right now and just pushing inward to try to center the inside of the clay. It's really easy to center the outside, but, well, it's actually hard to center the outside if you don't have a centered inside. So, by making it thinner, I'm aligning the particles. So I'm just like using my body weight and my leg and leverage on my legs and stuff to just push this right to the middle of the wheel. Ah, oh, yeah, baby. Ah. Oh. I wasn't about to say anything, but I was really afraid that wouldn't work well. So, uh, it did though, so we're good. Okay, so I'm opening right now. So I, when I open, I kind of, <clears throat> sometimes I open with two fingers, sometimes I open with my thumbs like this, sometimes I open with one finger like this, 
but I'm kind of settled in the middle where I like using my left thumb and my right hand and just pushing in like that to make the opening. There we go, that's better. There we go, that's a good thing. Just kind of like hooking in and trying to get a little bit of wall that I'm going to be able to lift here in a second. Sure, there we go. Okay, so here is the part that we're going to see how it goes. Yas. Oh, that went so well. Just really trying to make sure I get that bottom nice and even. Because, heaven forbid, you have a beautiful vessel and you look inside and it has a big, ugly bottom. One really nice pull here. No, I already put one in. Oh. Okay, we're doing good. We in business. It's going well, in case you're wondering. It's just making sure it stays going well. Look at that nice echoey sound in there. Love that. I'm just coning it in, get some extra height, make sure my, because if my top gets out of control, this whole thing will be out of control. I do not want that.
Yeah. So now I'm have I'm running the risk, but it's not I'm not gonna let it happen of this actually like the in this top rim like caving in. So I'm gonna need to get a a blow dryer. Got that on video nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I need to approach this in a smart fashion. So I need to make these lines. Oh, I'm thinking yeah. how do I wanna do this? I think I'll do this after I make the the lines out. Oh, okay. First time doing this, and it's really difficult for me. Gosh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Ben, it looks so nice just now. It's okay. Just trying to salvage something. No. Okay. So frustrated right now. That's all. That's the story of how it feels. So frustrated. Because I'm not going to lie, I was trying to be stealthy about it, but I've never made anything that big. But that is not why it fell. That is not why it fell. It fell because I was trying a new technique, which could have made anything fall, no matter how big it was. And so... Um, I remember the exact project I was doing. I could tell you the artist I was trying to imitate. I was, it was in my ninth grade year. I was in my ceramics two class and the, it was my final project, right? I um, was imitating an artist who what he did was he would take his pieces and he would cut them and reattach them with glaze. I thought it was so cool. And at that point in time, the biggest thing I made was probably like, yay big maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe that tall, maybe that tall as far as on the potter's wheel, right? And so I was like, hey, mom, I got to make something out of this style. What should I do? And she's just like, well, I really would like a big, beautiful pitcher to put flowers in. 
And so I'm just like, oh, you know what? I can make that. I got you, mom. I am there. And then she found this picture on Instagram, this picture that had a skinny, skinny, skinny little base and had this big bulbous top that came out. And I'm just like, I can do that. I got it. And I tried so, so, so hard, but um, I didn't know my limits at that point. And so I was throwing twice as much clay as I'd ever thrown before. And I was trying to get it twice as tall as I'd ever gotten it before. And I was trying to get it thinner on this part and thicker on this part. I've never done that. And I was just, I probably went through an entire bag of clay in like a day because I was just totally trying stuff and absolutely destroying it every time. I tried doing it upside down, tried doing it all kinds. It was not working at all. And I remember just feeling so, um, defeated by it because I, I didn't know why. I'm like, I thought I was supposed to be good at this. Um, but after just getting away from it for a few days, I, um, I think I had a weekend and then I was just like, this is something I really love doing. I just need to learn how to do it without, if I'm making myself angry doing it, if I'm making myself upset doing it, then that's not how I want to do it. I need to find what I'm good at and work from there. I'm not going to be the best. I'm not going to be the very, very best. I have, I have ways to learn. I'm not going to be my teacher. Or I'm not going to be this person I see on Instagram just because I'm better than some of the people in my class. Um, so just me kind of realizing my place as an artist that I still have a lot of room to grow. Um, and now I use that to see how I can grow and to push myself like the right amount to not absolutely kill myself with something new, but to, um, challenge myself in a healthy way. So the approach I'm taking on this guy is I'm actually going to do a two-part throw. So this is going to be kind of interesting. In a little bit, I'm going to, get, I'm going to hopefully get this done a little quicker because I made it smaller as a, and I'm going to actually throw a second piece and then I'll put it on the top. So hopefully this will all work out really nice and pretty and not take too long. What happened last time? Okay, so... What I did is the clay on the top was like kind of thin, right? And what I ended up doing was by pressing out on the inside, especially without having like a good idea of how I was supposed to do it and like taking my time and <clears throat> pretty much I was, I was pressing out for a lot farther and a lot more time than I needed to be. That, what that did was it stretched out that inside even more. So it resulted in it being so thin that it just caved in under its own weight. And that was tragic. Um, <laughs> so that's my life. Yes. Um, yeah, so what, what, I, what I needed to have done is if I was going to throw it, first of all, I think throwing it in two pieces is better. That's what my, my teacher said is a little better. Um, it'll give me a chance to make oh, the one piece good. thrown faster and also hopefully to a better quality. Um, and also, uh, what am I saying? I think that something else that kind of went wrong with it was the fact that, uh, I don't know. I, I, th I think it was mostly that. It was mostly the fact that I just pulled it too thin and, I didn't really have my technique down. I had a kind of an error in the way I was going about it. Um, and right now I'm, where, I'm to the point where, like I said, I um, have definitely more things I'm comfortable with doing. And that's the basics. So I, I, I'm there on the basics and now I get to experiment. I get to say, what can I do that's, that's beyond just the normal make a pot, make a mug, you know? How can I take it to the very next level and define myself as an artist, what I do? So as far as my journey in ceramics, man, people around me have been like big O supportive. Um, but for one, I have a great teacher as of current. He really um, always pushes me to kind of do my best and he acknowledges like where I want to get and he's suggested colleges and stuff to do. and. If you ever can buy, get ceramic stuff for a cheap price, always get it because you'll never know when you need it, you know? Um, that kind of thing. And he, he's been really encouraging and helpful for me. Um, as well as friends at school, they've, you know, I, I always get so kind of shy about it, but at the same time, kind of proud of it because 
half, most of the people I know have no clue anything about ceramics. I could make something super ugly and they'd just be like, whoa, it's amazing. And I'm just like, bro, it's, it's not good. Um, but then my parents as well, even my grandparents actually, uh, when I bring stuff home after it gets fired or when I bring stuff home in the summer to my grandparents, they're always like, this is so great, man. What can I do to, like, I need you to make this. My mom always says that, I need you to make this. I'm just like, mom, I have projects to do. And she's like, well, I need you to make this. Spend more time and make this. Um, because she always, like she realizes, oh, it's because she's just selfish and wants my stuff. But, uh, <laughs> like, I always feel very encouraged. I feel that my dream is something achievable. Like, my dream of eventually opening up this studio where I can teach people and kind of um, foster this love of ceramics is something that, um, my parents have always been supportive of, my teachers, my friends, my, um, even my grandparents like, who paid for me to have like, classes over the summer for ceramics and stuff. Let me use their basement as my studio. Um, so yeah, I feel like that, that's, that's made a difference for sure. It's definitely kept me um, pushing towards my goal, ultimately. That's better. I'm actually going to signature this while it's upside down. Bro, that's cool. There we go. There's my signature right there. Now we are gonna do the turnover here. And this is the big money. <laughs> so I'm trying to kind of gauge my centering of this as how close it generally gets to my hand because I can't quite do the same technique because typically I'd just be like I keep my finger straight and then wherever it touched me like if, if I had it away from the pot the place where it would touch my finger is where it was closer to me so I'd push it more in but now because the top isn't a perfect circle I can't do that so Safe. We're gonna go with that. Look good? Now, here comes the magic moment. But first, I'm gonna score up this. So I'm preparing that to kind of have some little grips, just like the bottom of your shoe has grips on it that are like not flat. So stuff can grab in there. So it's a skirt, skirt, lock in place. Um, do the same on this. Hoping I have gauged these sizes well enough that this will actually go together quite easily with some slip. This is wet clay. It hardens not wet clay when it dries, as wet things tend to do. I'll put some on this as well. I get a real good bond in between them. That I can live with. Okay. Now this is all good and on the right place, on the right track. I'm gonna attach this down. Boom, boom, boom. There we go, okay. Now I've made, I've wrapped up this part right here. So this part's actually still quite soft. 
So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna, after I'm, I need to make sure this is attached well. So let me go ahead and trim this a little bit. And just get this part right here. Nice and attached, because I don't want this to be breaking off. Go. Now I have that same kind of shape right up here imitating the bottom there. Don't want to make this soaking wet. I just want enough water to... First I'm, I'm actually reaching down that inside and sealing up this kind of space. Okay. After I make it on the wheel, it will need to dry for a bit. So that means anywhere from like half a day to two days, depending on how humid it is outside, how hot it is in the room, whether the AC is on. Um, but once I get it to like a consistent, a consistency, a consistent dryness all the way through, I will um, usually trim it. So that means put a foot on it, like a little, little ring so it stands up. If I want to add some surface detail as well, I'll usually do it at that point in time. Um, and then it'll go into the bisque firing. That's the initial firing. When it gets all the moisture out of the clay and starts to harden it, I'll, after it comes out of there, I will put a liquid glaze on it. and then I will put it in for the glaze firing and the glaze firing will uh, melt the glaze onto the surface and create a nice, usually shiny glass type consistency. So yeah, the whole process pretty much. <laughs> 